Amos chapter 5, verse number 16. Now I've used this passage. Then we, uh, a person in my family who required the day of the Lord. We didn't have understanding of the Bible. And there are people out there who have got their days mixed up. They think that the day of the Lord is the time of the rapture. And it's wrong. The day of the Lord is the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ. We're not looking for that day unless you want to teach, unless you want to teach dispensation of wrong doctrine. This is a period after the tribulation. After the seven years, we are going as born again Bible believing Christians before the tribulation. We're looking for the rapture, not the day of the Lord. Now, when we pick up this passage here, the rapture has happened. And I don't know what the time frame of the rapture in the tribulation is, I have no idea. But the rapture has happened, and there are seven years. Of the tribulation period we are at the end of the seventh year therefore for the Lord the God of hosts and we've got Amos he's nailing who God is you can't read Amos and not know who we're talking about you can go to a church Sunday morning and think you're talking about God and you could be talking about asterisk you could be talking about Tammuz you know, Tammuz rose from the grave. The Lord says thus, Wailing shall be in all streets. Wailing. The rapture, no one has any idea is going to happen. We have no idea. And they shall say in all the highways, Alas! Alas! And they shall call the husbandmen to mourning. The ones that deal with crops, plants, nurseries. Mourning. Wailing. Mourning. Alas. And such as are skillful of lamentations to wailing. Now skillful lamentations, these are people we've already talked about. Chapter 5 is a lamentation of Amos. These are people who can write lamentations. They can cry. You know, the Jewish people had mourners for their funerals. These people were paid to come and cry for the deceased. Lamentations, wailing, wailing, mourning. And I don't mean as the sun coming up. And in all vineyards shall be wailing. Well, that keeps coming up. Let me ask you something about the Christian. Now, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to recognize each other in heaven. I don't know if we're going to recognize each other in the rapture. But let's say, for instance, if you will, if you do. Are you going to be wailing in the morning that you see your loved ones there in the clouds? And then the next step is you'll be moving to Jesus Christ? Now maybe the worldly Christians will be wailing. Give me a little more time, Jesus. Okay, let's say we don't know we don't know our loved ones when the rapture happens. I don't know. I have no idea. Are you going to be wailing because you've seen finally seen Jesus Christ? Is that going to be a time of mourning? When you finally, you've left this earth, you are in the air, and there is the Lord Jesus Christ with his arms stretched out for us. Is that going to be mourning? I don't think so. Man, that's just the beginning of my greatness. Except for the judgment seat of Christ where I will suffer loss. Everything else is going to be glorious, wonderful, and excellent. At that point, I'm going to get a body that's never going to suffer anymore. At that point, later on, Revelation 21 and 22, I'm going to have all the tears wiped away. The only two times bad after the rapture for the Christian is when you suffer rewards at the judgment seat of Christ and you do see loved ones get passed off in the lake of fire. 
Those are only two bad times that you will have after the rapture. Other, other than that, you are with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a time of, of mirth. It's a time of celebration. It's a time of love. Not willing. For I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Okay. That's not the rapture. Jesus Christ is not going to step on, a, on this earth and go, okay, yeah, yeah, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine. No. The trump's going to blow and we're going. We're going to meet him. Second, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says. Okay, now this is the verse that I, that I had. Whoa. Is that a good word? I mean, it, it's old English. You see a child about to run out in the street and here comes a car. Whoa! Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. And you don't have to be mean to them. They don't know. They say, Do you think the day of the Lord? Well, let me show you something in Amos. It says, woe unto you. That's not our time. And believe it or not, there are preachers from the pulpit telling them, hey, as a Christian, you are to desire the day of the Lord. Because you're going to go through the tribulation period. That's what churches, some churches teach about the Christian. They're doctrinally wrong. They tell Christians you're going to go through that period. Religions will tell you you're going through that. Well, they are. Jehovah Witnesses look forward to the day of the Lord. I wonder what the New Living Bible says in this verse. You notice how it's five death, number of death in the Bible, and 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6. Show that to a Jehovah Witness. To what end is it for you? What end? That's the end of the tribulation period. The day of the Lord is darkness. Where do you ever see that with, with the references to the rapture? All right, clouds. Who says those clouds are going to, you know, we look up in heaven, we see those clouds, like, yeah, this could be the time. Who says the earth is going to have a clouds? Yeah, okay, there may be a cloud in one city, but what about the city you live? What if it's a cloudless, sunny, great sky? Bright night, moon, shine, and everything like that. It may be clouds that this earth will not see. But it says darkness and not light. That matches the seventh year, the end of the tribulation period, when there is no sun and there is no moon giving off their light. As if a man did the, oh, excuse me, as if a man did flee from a lion. Ah! I know a, a character of a movie of a girl who walked with a lion. Who needed courage. She didn't flee from him. I'm trying to get you a little adapted to it aren't you and a bear met him david said he got victory over a lion and a bear but here's a guy he's running from a lion and he gets right into a bear you're having a bad day or went into the house he escaped him runs into the house Safety, right? And leaned his hand on the wall. Whew. Wow. Man. <laughs> My life is spared. Oh, man. And leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. 
lion, bear, serpent? Is that something you're looking for at the rapture? Those are three animals that show up as a classification for the Antichrist. You know, you know what Amos is saying? You think you ran from Satan? All right, maybe. The bear got you. Or maybe you escaped the bear. Maybe. But then that old wise serpent, Satan, bit you. You're not going to escape. Unless the sure mercies of God. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark, no sunlight. Go back to all our studies, studies from Genesis 1 to Amos 5. All the times we've looked at that moon going blood, the sun going out, the stars falling, very dark. And no brightness in it. There is coming a time on this earth total, absolutely complete, utter darkness. No electricity and no batteries. No AC, no DC. That is not the rapture, my friend. The rapture is going to be, you're just going to go on just like you're doing, then boom, you're gone. Now watch this one. Now we got to read these verses now all together. Ready? Let's read these verses together as one. Now we're going away from the day of the Lord. Let's read these verses. Amos. It's right into Israel. The northern tribe. Where not one king has ever done right. I hate. That's God speaking. You wouldn't think God hated anything with today's modern preaching, would you? I despise. Great words from the loving God, isn't it? Your feast days. All right, let me go and say. Easter. Christmas. Fourth of July. People's birthdays. Your feast days. I've got a reason why I'm saying this. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. The, 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 the smell of coming off the altar. The, the incense being burnt. I'm not going to smell it. I'm not going to smell your barbecues. I'm not going to smell your suntan lotion as you're roasting by bail. Take that perfume off. You make me sick. I may even spew you out. Though ye offer me burnt offerings, you give God. God says the pronoun me. God says, though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Cain offered God a offering to God. And God says, I don't approve. And Cain thought he was doing perfectly right. As thousands, if not millions of Christians today. Especially with this time coming up as Easter. They think they're doing God's service all for fun, in the name of fun, 
preacher told me the other day on, on the internet. We do it for fun for the kids and try to get. He didn't. Want, he didn't know no history. Though you think you're doing it for God, God says, I will not accept it. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Get all your animals fat. Get them glory for me. Give that fat to me like the law prescribes. I'm not taking it. Now, a liberal crap. How mean your God. We give him suffer. And how dare he tell us he's not going to take it. You mean like coming to God with water baptism? When he died on that cross for your sins? You mean you're going to come to God with your works after he was beaten with cat of nine tails? While he was had the thorns placed upon his, 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 his head? While he was uh, had his beard pulled? While he was spitted upon? While he had nails put into his, his hands and his feet? And while he was pierced to his side? You think your works are going to please God? You think the church that you belong to when Jesus Christ left glory is going to do it? Do all the penance you want. Do it in the name of God. Walk up and down stairs on glass as they do in the foreign country. God says, I don't want to see it. I don't care about it. You burn your candles. You kill all the people you want to kill. I don't approve. Cain, you bring all the fruit you can bring in the world. I still don't approve of it. You got to get that. Just because you have concocted in your brain that God is, is so lovable and so great and so wonderful that he's going to accept what you bring to him, that is a bunch of trash out of hell because you better bring to God what he expects. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. Oh, we sing to Jesus in our churches. Yeah, songs that have nothing to do with Jesus. Songs that violate the scriptures. More world and more fleshy. Fooling around. With the song. God says, take it away. I don't want to hear it. That's the God that liberals don't like. That's the God that these modern churches don't like. That's the God that's not preached. For I will not hear the melody of your vials. Ooh. Somebody's got to be doing something wrong. For God to be having this conduct. For God to be saying what he's saying. The true and holy God. There's got to be something wrong. Because it's not God. If I go out and sin. It's not God's fault. It is my fault. My lack of patience is not the Lord Jesus Christ. It is me. And when God says, I'm not going to accept it, I'm not going to take it, why don't you just stop it? It is because of your own wickedness. But let judgment run down as waters. Very quick. Very rapid. Very destroying. I've got to see... A small waterfall in action. And the great destruction that it has caused. And the great peacefulness that it has. And righteousness as a mighty stream. Psalms 51 verse 6. God is going to overflow all these people with righteousness. But they ain't got it. What they're doing is not holy. What they're doing is not right. They will be judged. They will die in their sins. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices? John 4, 7-11. 
No, I take that back. No, that's not. Verses 25 to 27, Amos 7, 42 and 43. We just read it. Have you offered me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? They had the tabernacle there. Moses and Aaron, the, the priests, the Levites. There was an example of what you were supposed to do. The tabernacle, the brazen altar that God prescribed, everything that God has prescribed in the law, in the writing of Moses, by the word of God. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Molech, not the tabernacle of God. You see what we're saying here when we started reading verses 21, 22, and 23. They were doing offerings not to God. They are doing it to Mary. They are not doing it to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were doing it to Allah. They are not doing it to, to, to the Trinity found in the Holy Scriptures about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They were doing it to the mighty flesh, yoga, and everything else. They were bringing things to God, but not by God, but through Molech and Chunum or Kenum or Kion, however you want to pronounce it. 1 Kings 11, 33. You're actually doing everything you're doing. You're doing it to a false God and God will not approve of it. You're doing religion. Your images. God said, make no images. That's in the Big Ten. Now, get this one. Now, we're going back. To, I know I've been bringing to the church age, but we're talking about Israel. The star of your God. You know what that star is today. The star today has no Bible reference at all. It's called the Star of David. The star of David is nothing biblical. It's the star of your small G-O-D. It's got six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's got six triangles. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's got six openings between the, the angles of the triangles. One, two, three, four, five, six. That star is not the star of David is the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Now, a lot of people just hate what I just said. I don't care. That's what the Bible says. The Jews made that star. That star was made by them, not made by God. Now, Israel is going to have any kind of symbol that would represent them as a nation. It would be the stars, the sun and the moon as uh, Joseph's dream. It would be a serpent becoming a rod, Moses. It would be a sign of leprosy, Moses sticking his hand in the side and pulling it out. It would be a sign of water turning to blood, Moses, introduction to the Israel. It would be a vast sea being opened up for their redemption. Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. It would be a lamb slain with his blood upon the three posts of a door. The night that God redeemed Israel. The book of Exodus. It would be a sword that got them into the land. By Joshua, by Gideon, the sword of the Lord. In uh, Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is as a sword. Quick and powerful. It could be any one of those references, but it's not this kind of star of David. Therefore, with all your worship of not me, but religion, Israel, and this happens, Will I cause you to go into captivity? And they do. 
beyond Damascus. That's funny how Damascus keeps showing up. Did you read where Damascus, Paul's on the road to Damascus. Israel's going to go beyond Damascus. The northern tribes. Saith the Lord again, whose name is the God of hosts. We are not waiting for the day of the Lord. No one is waiting for the day of the Lord. It's a miserable day. And when you sacrifice to God, thinking you can think you're doing it to God, but you're deceived. You are deceived. And you'll stand before God one day and give an account when you didn't give all the glory. Imagine God counting all your money, all your time, all your works, everything you've done, what you thought was for him to a small G-O-D. And when they're weighed in the balances, you will be coming up wanting. We are having a battle now with Muslims, ISIS, all kinds of world terror going on. And can you imagine the shock of an ISIS warrior who is dedicated to his God and goes in somewhere and blows or shoots or whatever he does to kill people in the name of Allah. Can you imagine that moment when he is dead himself, whether he caught whatever, or his bomb, whatever it is he died. Can you imagine the shock is that he doesn't get the virgins, he gets hell. Can you imagine somebody who their whole family, their whole life, is grown up to worship a man and a woman. And somebody nailed on a cross. And you burn the candles, and you pray, and you pay, and you go in the closet, and you do everything that they tell you to do, sincerely. Sincerely. And you find out the great white throne judgment, you're sincerely wrong. When God has written a book that is published, can get, you can buy it on the internet. If you can't buy it on the internet, it's on the internet. And in the pages of his word, he will tell you how and what you need to do to be saved. You can come across these videos, and I put on my videos the message. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now, you can receive that, or you can reject it. God has laid it out. God is righteous. God is holy. God sent Amos, hey, Israel, wake up. Israel never woke up. He tells us Christians, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. We go out there, bring the gospel to them, however the Lord wants us to do it, how to do it, way the Bible performed us to do it. And you're left with a choice. Everyone has that choice. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. No other name. And Amos ends with whose name is the God of hope.